Hello YouTube gun people. Isn't that a pretty picture? It's uh, my tool. I'm going to use it tomorrow. Got a big uh, steel challenge match coming up. Um, and for me the challenge is not getting, uh, not, not, uh, not looking too bad. Just try to be reasonable. <clears throat> I switched over um, to the 1911 folks for um, for competition. If you can call what I do competition, I'm, uh, I'm amateur. I do it for fun. I do it because I um, if I carry a firearm, I want to be proficient with shooting in general. But most most first and foremost, I do it because I, I really enjoy it. It's it's a good outlet, you know. Um, so steel challenge. I want to talk to you about 1911s a little bit. Um, so here's what I'll be shooting. These are all tried and true magazines. These two came with the uh, the pistol. They're really nice. They're not the Wilsons. These are actually um, the uh, from Smith and Wesson. They are the um, they're from. Let's see, right here. I doubt you can see this because it's black on black. But they're actually Acmag. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Well, they're Acmag. Trust me. High quality. I also, by the way, for all these shooting competitions where you drop in, drop in um, magazines on the ground a lot, you really want to have a, a plate here, a bumper, so you don't destroy your magazines. I really like these uh, Kim Pro Tac mags. Really nice. They all, all these magazines have witness holes on them, so you know how many rounds are in there. The Kim Pro Tac Mag is a really, really nice magazine. Very reliable, no tilt follower, kind of standard. Any decent magazine has a no tilt follower. This guy still has sand in it from the last time. I don't care, man. My gun shoots no matter what, which is what the purpose of this video. And these, are, I think, are the magazine deal of the century. Okay. These are Metgars. Metgar makes great magazines. These guys have a polymer over um, metal um, follower, and they are really reliable. They're relatively inexpensive. If you don't want to be spending 30 bucks a pop for 1911 magazines that are made by Wilson Combat, you know, because after all, they say Wilson Combat on them, so you ought to be able to charge people, you know, 10 bucks more magazine because somebody wrote Wilson on it. Um, you can try these. These are probably somewhere around fifteen to seventeen dollars a piece. They are extremely good, extremely good. Metgar makes great, great magazines. Um, this is like a self-lubricating uh, follower. It's no non-tilt. It uh, it does what it's supposed to do, and it's got the floor plate on it. You can pop it out here and clean them. Alright, steel challenge tomorrow. Looking forward to it, but I want to talk to you about 1911 pistols. Um, why am I switching to 1911? I don't know. Uh, I have to say that uh, it kind of took me by surprise. Uh, I hadn't had, um, I hadn't been shooting with a 1911 uh, in, in any, in like IDPA or anything like that. I, you know, I was basically um, uh, using my uh, Smith and Wesson M and P nine, or before that, I was using a Beretta uh, ninety two FS stainless. Um, that gun became somewhat problematic uh, that I lost faith in it, uh, so that that was out of the competition realm for me. And then uh, my Smith & Wesson m and it's a fine firearm. It really is a great firearm. I, I, I like it a lot. It shoots great. It's been very, very reliable. I've never had any issue with it um, at all. But um, once, just, just for shits and giggles, I decided to shoot the 1911 at an ID, a few IDPA practices. And it just feels good. It just feels... No, I, I don't. So I'm saying this, and I'm saying 1911s all, but this is the one I I was shooting. Uh, really, really good. Um, so uh, if it feels good, do it. So I'm doing it. This is going to be. Uh,
This is going to be my uh, competition gun now until I find something else. Um, what I like about this is for competition, I have zero need for um, for an ambidex ambidextrous safety. I don't need them. As a matter of fact, I don't really like them. I don't have a need for it. And for most competitions, it's not really not really necessary. But you know, that's what you're into, man. That's what you're into, right? Um, I also uh, want a gun that's uh, extremely reliable. Now, in my state, we are limited what we can purchase about 1911s. We just are. It's the state rules. Okay. I did a video on it a little bit, um, so you can kind of check out the video and you'll see what I'm saying. Okay. Why? Yeah. Don't even. Let's not go there right now. Um, this little baby is. Um, Sort of a your run-of-the-mill Smith and Wesson 1911. It's uh, it's pretty all very much 1911. I think that what takes apart takes away from it is the um, external extractor. In some people's mind, in my mind, I don't really care. I know a lot of handguns that have external extractors. Um, Glock comes to mind. They're pretty damn reliable. Uh, and Browning's original design of the 1911 external extractor. The idea that it gets more gummed up than an internal one is complete well it's just complete internet warrior bullshit. It ain't true. Uh, I want what I want to say about this pistol is that uh, not so much to review it but to just tell you that uh, this pistol is extraordinarily reliable which is a prerequisite for any competition. It must be reliable, otherwise it's you're wasting your time and your money because you can't you can't um, you can't shoot an unreliable pistol if you get malfunctions. It really kills your time. You're done. Uh, <clears throat> this guy now, I've actually calculated it, uh, and the way I calculated the number of rounds I put through this is um, by the number of bullets that I bought to reload. And I realized this evening that this gun now has, um, it has over probably about uh, 4,000 rounds in it. So 4,000 and change through this gun. How many malfunctions? How many? Two. You know why? Well, one of them was a uh, light primer strike, and that was because it's range brass, and some of the brass is deformed. Okay, so the bottom of the bottom of the bullet is kind of bowed in, so when the primer strikes, it doesn't quite reach it. And the other one, uh, me being the expert reloader that I am, or at least when I was in the beginning, I uh, loaded around uh, and um, didn't put any powder in it. So that's not the gun's fault, that's the dumbass reloader's fault. Yeah, so anyway, uh, luckily that was just practice time at the range, so it kind of went <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, shit, broke down, broke down the gun, there's a bullet in the chamber. Uh, it, it didn't cycle, of course, the primer alone won't let it cycle. Just um, push out the bullet, no fuss, no mess, uh, move on, okay? That's, by the way, uh, one of the reasons you pay a lot of money for self-defense ammo. This gun uh, cost me, at the time, somewhere around uh, $700 and change. Close, let's say 800 bucks for the sake of argument. Uh, it's been extremely reliable. Extremely and extraordinarily reliable. Uh, I want to show you some close-ups of it and uh, some of the characteristics that I like about it. And I think it's got everything that that higher end guns have at a lot less money. And it's also got another thing called a lifetime warranty. And I, I think that's pretty hard to beat. You know, it speaks for itself. So let me move the camera, I'll get back to you. Alright, so here she is. This is my um, tactical WD-40 pen. My wife got me this last year for Christmas. It was my Christmas stocking. Sweet. Um, 
Yeah, uh, this thing's just really reliable. Now, with that round count through it, what I want to try to do is get some close-ups of this thing and show you that uh, you you just wouldn't really know it. Let's do some basic things first of all. Let's test the tightness of the gun. That slide is wicked. That thing ain't moving around. If you look at the fit, it's pretty tight. People pay big bucks for that kind of fit and finish. Everything's flush back here, real nice. The sights are okay, probably eventually, but they are dovetailed, so eventually I'll get them changed out. It's a, it's got a firing pin block, but it's a Schwartz type, so it's actuated through the um, through the grip safety, not through the not through the um, trigger. That's what it's called. So um, yeah, people make a big fuss about them. I don't I don't really think that's I don't really think that makes sense. You know, I guess they're kind of purists. It's a beautiful firearm. Now, I don't know if you can see it because it's stainless on stainless. We're starting to get some wear marks from holsters here. I could do without the front serrations, but they're on there. It's cool. Uh, I get some wear marks here about holstering, reholstering the gun quite a bit. Got some wear marks on the trigger right here. You know, I guess when you buy a custom gun, the, the Smith really makes sure that there's some up and down play. But, you know, people make a big deal about this stuff. You don't, I don't feel it when, I, when I'm actually using it. Let me put it to you this way. If you're shooting and you're worrying about that shit, you're not concentrating on what your primary mission is, that's for sure. Um, $800 handgun. Really, it's a beauty. Uh, and, you know, just, it, it's tough. It's got a beveled magazine well. I'll put, um, I'll put a extended magazine well on there. But look, this thing's got a lot of rounds through it, and there's hardly anywhere at all. There's some of the finishes coming off on the back here. I like that. I think that's kind of hot. It's kind of sexy, you know what I mean? You all know what I mean, right? You've all been to the bar, and there's kind of the trampy-looking chick there. You think she's hot. Don't lie to me, please. Stop it. A little used, but that's your thing. I know, I, yeah, believe me, dude. I've been there. Not, not re you know. I'm, 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 I'm a married man, family man. So, you know, just kidding. Yeah, my wife watches these videos, so I'm, I'm just kidding, honey. I was just kidding about the dog video too. Uh, somewhere here on the barrel, but that, that's kind of stopped after breaking. So I uh, use a slide glide on there. This thing runs like a clock. It really, really does. It's just a beautiful pistol. Uh, here's the business end of it. Um, there's some filth on it. Yeah, and all I like cleaning handguns, but I gotta tell you, I like shooting them a lot more. And I'm shooting some dirty ass uh, reloads too. W uh, 231 powder. <laughs> yeah, that's right. G just keeps going keeps going. Beautiful handgun. When you get into the realm of really expensive 1911s, I can understand why people buy them. They are, they're just nice to have. It's, you know, it's, um, it's no different than buying a really expensive watch. My watch is really inexpensive. And um, it's either no watch or a, a Timex. But, uh, you know, I could understand why people buy them. They're they're pretty. They're you know they can be heirloom quality. You could pass it on to people. Um, but you know, in terms of functionality, I don't think they function any better. Honestly, I, I just don't. I mean, dependability is dependability. You can get into accuracy about you know a group this big versus a group that big versus a group that big. In practical shooting, it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. There's a le certain level of accuracy that you have to be accepted. I mean, it can't the gun can't be flinging bullets all over the place. But you know, if you're consistently getting a a nice group, uh, you're doing fine. And, and let's face it, um, there's there's just no question that 99.9% .9 of the time, any gun out there will outshoot the shooter. 
limitations the shooter. So in thinking about handguns, you can, particularly the 1911, I highly recommend the Smith & Wesson line. I really, really like it. I'm not endorsed by anybody. The Smith & Wesson line is, um, it just seems really dependable. They've done it right. They've uh, worked with external extractors for a long time. They know what they're doing. They seem to have got it right. Now, this is not an E-series gun. Uh, the E-series, and you know, firearms makers have this really weird thing about firearms. They never make enough of them. So the E-series came out. <clears throat> there was a bunch of people were, you know, very excited about the E-series. Then they're like not available anywhere. They're really hard to find through the country, no matter what E-series they are. The E-series is a little bit different. It's got some enhancements on it. I won't get into that too much. The biggest enhancement I find, or what could be the biggest enhancement, is there's no firing pin block whatsoever in the E-series. Um, the drop uh, s test uh, is basically uh, requirements are drop the drop test requirements. Are, excuse me, are met by um, having a f uh, titanium fire pin firing pin in it and a heavy spring. So if you drop the handgun muzzle down, the inertia can't won't won't be enough to to set off a primer. Uh like you know like on a 70 70 series Colt or something like that. Having said that, uh, I'm not so sure how much of an issue that that's been in real life. Maybe it's been a big issue. I'm I'm just not sure. But um you know, whatever. And, but on the other hand, you know, is a firing pin safety such a bad thing? I I don't think it's such a bad thing. I don't I don't really. I have a friend of mine that has a custom, a real custom, not you know, not a um, a high end 1911 like a Les Bear or uh, a Wilson. They have a real custom. They bought parts from Caspian Arms, put it together. It's a beautiful firearm. It's fantastic. Uh, the trigger is super light on it. That's different than mine. I don't think I want some, you know, mine's probably a standard 1911 pull. Uh, I don't want anything too light. I think that too light is not good for me personally. Some people like it. I prefer it a little bit heavier. And, um, but it, uh, it doesn't necessarily shoot any better, but boy, is it pretty. Uh, so that's my thoughts on it tomorrow. I go out, try to dent some steel with some big old 45 bullets. Oh, the other thing I like about the 45 is I'm getting at that age now where I'm, uh, you know, rolling right into old fartdom pretty rapidly, getting there quickly. Uh, my kids remind me of that dad, you, you're no fart. Thank you, thank you, honey. Um, yeah, and the cool thing about loading and re reloading for the 1911 is 45 ACP, man. You don't need your reading glasses. <laughs> the primers are nice and big. You can see them just fine. The bullets are nice and big and fat. and Yeah, they look, they look all kind of innocent and cute and everything, but um, uh, they, they, are, uh, they are no joke. And so, um, in the spirit of dogs and dog discussions, I will leave you with um, uh, my awesome buddy right here. Uh, she's good. She's looking like a goober right now. Where's the cat? Yeah. Yeah. Have a good night.